I'd like to call to order the Town of McCandless Town Council meeting for July 11th, 2022. Uh, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance by Council Member Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Council Member Schweiger. Uh, we start all meetings with the same, uh, I'll read the same thing. We, uh, we're here to work together to better our town. We all have equal voices. We may disagree, which we do at times, but we will do so with civility and respect because in the end, we are all neighbors. Uh, first, a few announcements. Uh, the one is a little, a little, a little bit sad. Um, so, uh, the town has learned of the passing of Greg Wachowskis. Uh He was a former uh, town council member, uh, and he was a current member of the planning commission. He died uh, on June 30th. Uh, he served the town in numerous ways. Town council from 2016 to 2020, and was the council vice president from 2018 to 2020. Uh, and he was the planning commission from September 2020 uh, onward. Um, Greg always, the uh, thing I remember most about Greg is whenever he would give a comment to us, it wouldn't be like a three sentence email. It would be like eight paragraphs, single space, six point about the most minute detail, which it's uh, refreshing to see somebody uh, put that much effort of their personal time into, into local government. So that, that's one thing I'd always remember. Uh, uh, about Greg. So if we could all just bow our heads for a few moments of silence and remember him, Greg, that would be good. Thank you. Uh, next up, uh, we have a new code enforcement officer. Is Alex here? Come on up, Alex. Welcome to the team. Thank you. Uh, I'll read a little bit and then you can talk a, a little bit more. I, I, you joined us in June of this year as our new, as our new code enforcement officer. Uh, you served previously at Turtle Creek Valley of Governments, spent several years with the Oakland Business Improvement District, working on property maintenance and community development issues. Uh, you have a certification in property maintenance and housing. In his free time, he is a big fan of Star Wars, so myself as well. Welcome to the team, Alex. Do you want to give us a little bit about you, your family, sure. where, you, where you grew up and raised? And... So I'm a Pittsburgh native, but currently live in the city. Yeah. Um, decent chance we'd move north this way. Uh, live in the city with my wife, three daughters. Um, pretty boring. <laughs> where were you born? But uh, I was born in the city. In Oakland. Okay, so you're oh, yeah, yeah. born and bred, native, yeah. all the way. Nice. I don't, uh, don't bleed black and gold, though, so. I won't go that far. I know it's terrible. <laughs> Should I say that in a public meeting? <laughs> Born and bred. Um, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thank Welcome you. to the team. Uh, you got a good group to work with, and I think uh, it would be a good addition to it. Thank you very so, much. Welcome, Alex. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, next up, I wanted to announce that we've had uh, two previous exec sessions. Uh, regarding personnel matters, no uh, action was taken. Those were on June 22nd, uh, 2022, and today, July 11th, uh, 2022. So that's some housekeeping stuff there. Uh, next up, uh, the town uh, received a fire prevention grant award from FM Global, and we have a, a, a plaque here, which I can give to Jeff in a second. Uh, the town, we received a $2,745 fire protection, protection grant from FN Global, one of the world's largest commercial property insurers. It will be used to assist with fire investigations to help our fire marshal more effectively examine and determine the cause of a fire. Uh, we'll use this specifically to purchase a laptop with necessary accessories and LED lighting for on-scene investigations uh, because fire continues to be the leading cause of property damage worldwide. Uh, FM Global for over the past 40 years has contributed millions to fire protection grants for fire service organizations around the globe. So 
um, I believe Jeff, you did all the heavy lifting for this too, right? You, you did the application, the grant and all that. So, okay. It's time for the little snapshot. <laughs> Who's taking a picture? Where do you look? Thank you. Appreciate that summer absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next up, um, we uh, uh, anyone in the audience uh, or anyone online that wants to make public comment on agenda items only. Uh, please uh, come to the podium, uh, announce your name and your address. And then if we have anybody online that's done this before, put your name in the chat box and Sandra will call on you uh, once once we're done here. So is there anyone here tonight that wants to provide public comment on any agenda items? Okay. Seeing none here. Uh, anybody online, Sandra? No. No? Okay, thank you. Uh, Next item, uh, we're gonna approve the meeting minutes from our June 27th meeting. Those were uh, included in council's packets. Uh, did anyone have any uh, comments or changes to those minutes that need to be noted? No. Mr. Singer? I'll make a motion to approve uh, the meeting of town council minutes of June 27th, 2022. Okay. Second. Ms. Schweiger? Any comments, any other comments before we vote? No? Okay. Uh, everyone in favor of accepting the June 27th meeting minutes, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that passes. Okay. Uh, so we'll do reports of committees now. Uh, I'll handle uh, Ms. Rafa's uh, uh, reports since she is uh, not with us this evening. Uh, Chief's report. Hi, everybody. The only things I wanted to note in my report this month were the early retirement of Officer Caper. It leads my report. And a minor correction there would be he actually did 18 years in the town, 10 years with the city of Pittsburgh police before that, and then was a U.S. Marine prior to his city time. He purchased his Marine Corps time and it enabled him to retire early from the town. So that's a minor correction in my report for you folks. And uh, training as usual. And um, this coming Friday, 4 p.m. is the deadline to apply to be a McCormick's police officer. Anyone out in the community watching that, keep that in mind, please. They can get an application here or online at the town site. And also National Ride Out's coming in August 2nd. We're planning that. Remind everybody, uh, hopefully we'll, have, we'll be well attended and uh, we can get some volunteers and such like we did last year. Ms. Clement, hopefully we can count on your your people. And that's all I have. Anyone have any questions? Chief off? No. Nope. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Fire Marshal. Just open up for any questions. Um, the only thing I'll, I'll kind of add is, well, you notice uh, there's some information missing, and that's only because I have to get the information from Allegheny County. Um, they send me a lot. They send me a call report every month. Uh, as of yet, I still have to get June's. I'm not sure what the hiccup is, um, but I use that information to get most of these numbers for you. So. Um, Hopefully by the next council meeting, I will have this completely updated. Um, I don't know if I'm biting off more than I can chew because I know Dan always had it a good month uh, in arrears. So like you would only be getting the May um, minutes right now, but I'm trying to get, give you got everybody some very current information and I'm starting to run into some problems. So, I may have to go back to that so that I can give you guys the proper information. But 
So we'll see what happens. But um, other than that, the only thing else I'll add is um, all the equipment uh, from the grant has actually been purchased and is in, and I've already started putting it to, to good use. So, uh, great any questions? Any questions from council? Thank you for the extra effort, Jeff, on all on the grant and all that. Yes. That's, uh, yeah, I like the initiative. Keep, keep it Thank going. You. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, building permit, do we handle it, RJ or, or Jeff? I guess we have any questions. Surprise, all right. Do you have any questions? Yeah, yeah I guess. Happy to answer does anybody have any questions down. about the building permit report? Seeing none up here. <laughs> okay. Uh, code enforcement report. What do we have? I know it was a preliminary yeah, one. So right? historically, we didn't have a code enforcement officer here, but if you have any questions, because um, we have a little bit of a new format as we're sort of in the transition between what we had and heading to the support of software. Um, so, you know, that's where we're here if you have any questions about that. Does anybody have any questions about the report that was in our? Um, there's a lot less detail on the current report as compared to previous reports. Um, I would like um, to see the addresses of the complaints because I have submitted complaints a lot for my residents. And when you just say for high grass complaints, you don't know if your actual grass complaint was one of those. And there's also no um, follow up on, you know, what was done and, you know, when it was resolved. So you can say the report grass complaints to a result. Well, you don't know if it's your grass complaint when you're looking at the grass that's still high. So I would like a much more detailed way for council members to be able to follow these enforcements and you know for citizens also to be able to, call to see if they're because i have people call me that complained about this it goes in a black hole it's nothing's ever done about it and i would like to be able to direct them to say oh no look this action a citation was given or a verbal warning was given or a written warning or whatever the process is yeah so there are a couple things that i can share about. do you want to you can do it i can yeah that's fine okay. so um to i'll i'll explain a couple things that are on Again, this is sort of an adaptive format as we're moving into this new software. We can make adjustments. Right now, we're sort of in a stopgap system, which we can't do a lot of adjustments to the formats of the reports that are put out, but that's more money. So, um, previously, you got a report on the number of violations or you know, cases that were added each month, um, and they were broken out into some auto program categories and then the access take place, which were as a simple point from uh, as a credit to it. <clears throat> so we have um, under this tech system increased some of the information of like um, the number of violations that were open in that one versus closed. That was something that you kind of just had to guess and check yourself with the old report. So we've added that. Um, there are also uh, the number of violations that are still pending. So again, you don't have to you know, guess how many were closed versus open in the past month. Um, but that said, there was a somewhat detailed report with addresses um, for the complaints that are pending. Now, this particular tech system that we're using provides pretty much all the details of the information here. Um, however, in the past, I've been advised by our legal counsel um, that Basically, every other And so, you know, and I don't know if that's something that you would want to speak to tonight. I know I'm kind of putting on spots and there is one, but um, again, you know, that's something that we can put in internal packets, but as we put it out to the public, it's generally not advised to lay off the um, So I don't know if you have any thoughts. Agree, differ, you know, I'm open to. No, ab absolutely. I mean, certainly any sort of code enforcement um, has the possibility of either being brought, if it's zoning, being brought up to, on appeal to the zoning hearing board, if it is property maintenance or otherwise going to the magistrate. So it is likely not advisable to publish a citation or something of that sort 
strictly straight out to the public until that has been resolved or at least um, has gotten to a certain point in the stage where it is more than just an accusation or it has gone through a review, you know, perhaps from legal counsel if it's something that we have to look at further before it's going out. Um, if it's a question of internal reporting, it's it's a little bit different, but I, I certainly can see why, um, for example, if the second that something came in for a property and it hasn't been actually inspected yet or it hasn't been you know thoroughly reviewed yet it, it may not be advisable to just publish it right away um, and there could be other reasons why you would want to keep it um, from the public until it has at least been been reviewed and, and and like i said it possibly reviewed because more serious actions need to be taken or you have to be cautious about what sort of information is out um, in the way that this is just is reporting right now um, it will show all the pieces in there whether there is or is not a violation, that's where you'll see um, on the section of this, you know, sort of new tech report, uh, where it's closed with the violations found, that's basically what you see. It will not always be the same level of violations. So I think that's, at least for this month, that's what we put out in the public. We can certainly continue to improve on it. Um, but when it comes to the case detail, I would just hesitate to publish that because people are going to see things show up on there. And I'm not talking about the terrorists. I'm not talking about this kind of I'm talking about received a complaint that an action was taken and that it was resolved. So for if there was an action taken or no action necessary, the problem was solved. Okay. So you so know, you're saying you have that for addresses specifically. No, how do how do citizens know that their complaints have been received? We have an auto responder. I guess if, if you're asking, like, just for a thank you, we received your complaint, we can we can come in, but doesn't be shaking your head. So that doesn't no. seem like it fits. So, what Peter Township has is when you file a complaint, it's a three step process, and you get a case number, and they say, We received your complaint one, two, we sent your complaint to public work, Puddle. we sent your complaint to public works. And then it says, and then the next thing would be the resolution is pending. And then you would say, pop the field on such and such date resolved. So they have like a 411 system. Yeah, I have a 311. Yeah. Yeah, it's not necessarily going to be. Yeah. But I mean, I can, I can certainly do that. I'll reach out. I've talked to the tech committee about this, about having something that residents can kind of look at and see. Because I get complaints all the time saying they make complaints, they don't feel like it's getting heard and I don't have anything to give them to show them that it's getting heard because what we're getting just says we have this many complaints but it doesn't say what they were yeah it was it in the 411 it's the 31 it's three or, I'm sorry I'm used to I'm used to it being 311 is part of the software um, lookup we're looking at it in tracer we're also looking at it in a new website development and so on a routine complaint um that isn't necessarily code enforcement that's going to potentially progress to the magistrate, those would be more timely, absolutely. And that's what the 311 allows. Or if it elevates to code enforcement, then it would potentially go into an internal report. So yes, once we go to the new software, which is within the next few months, hopefully we'll be bringing that to council. I think citizens would really appreciate knowing mm -hmm. they've been heard. Yes. Are you utilizing the Turtle Creek COG software? Yes, we are, actually. So, I mean, that's kind of just a stock gap right now, again. Um, does it have that capability? Uh, you mean, it's, it's not a public system platform. Um, it's it's, it's but, system. Would it give that to management here in the town that they could follow up? The information she's talking about. Yes, and council members. Yeah. I mean, we, we can we can provide it. Like I said, the, we're happy to provide the internal. Uh, we do. We plan to the next month will be an internal report back. Cool. Yeah. Great. So the goal is in the next packet or in a month, mm -hmm. we'll have that in our internal packet. Yeah. Well, actually, so yeah. the, the request was passed along to me this morning. So we went ahead and ran the report. Um, so you know, tomorrow morning we can distribute the one as well. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else in that? Okay. Uh, 
Uh, moving on to liaison reports, uh, Council Member Schweiger, would you like to do first now? Sure. Um, so Ryan pointed out the one thing I wanted to point out uh, on July 17th, there will be the last day to apply uh, for the open position for our police officer. Um, another thing I'd like to point out is July 20th, 930 is our next meeting. Um, that's pretty much it. Any questions, comments? There are some vacancies on the multiple police vacancies that are not in this year's budget, but those are proposed for future budgets? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, report from the Volunteer Firefighter Steering Committee, Mr. Singer. Sure. This is a meets every quarter. Uh, the attached minutes were sent out to council. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Seeing none. Uh, now for the public, is there any comments on the public safety part that we discussed either in uh, here in council chambers or online? No one online? Okay, very good. Moving on to facilities management. Mr. Singer, would you like to take us through this? Sure. Uh, first item here is staff report for public works activity. Jeff, would you like to summarize? <coughs> Um, do you have any questions? Report? I got a few things to go over. I'll try to be as fast as possible. Um, landscape around the building um, and the connecting sidewalks in the rear of Devlin Park that uh, were never connected previously. Uh, those two things are scheduled to be done by the end of next week. So for a national night out, folks don't have to walk through the mud in uh, the building, the cosmetics of the building should be improved greatly. Um, not to mention, we did remove a couple of trees. We are gonna be replacing windows. Trees were overgrown. They weren't properly pruned over the years. So um, I don't like to remove trees, but in that case, we had no choice. Uh, forest meadow pond retrofit. Uh, the pre-construction meeting is supposed to happen within a week or two. Um, and then that should be started late July, early August. The duration will be 30 to 45 days. The grubs and about 19 sidewalk, uh, spoke with the engineers, they're doing revisions. Um, that's supposed to be put up for bid within the next few, few weeks, hopefully in the next two weeks. That work could possibly start early fall. Um, windows and HVAC, I'm still waiting the engineer drawings for the windows. I'm expected to uh, get this, I'm hoping to get this, the spec together and get it out for bid in August. Um, the HVAC project, uh, meeting with them again next week. Um, Wall Park, uh, Mr. Casey and I and Mr. Singer met with um, the Baseball Association. The grant that we originally had for Wall Park, we're gonna push that off and uh, file for an extension to April. Um, that was a funding issue, but we're going to try to work around that as, as best as we can. Um, paving program started today. Um, it is posted mm -hmm. online, and I believe it's also paste, uh, posted on our uh, McKinnis and the app. That'll be updated. I don't want to say daily, but that'll update, be updated several times a week. As the project moves forward, we'll give folks the notice. That's a demerit, Mr. Casey. <laughs> Um, they are notified via letter to every resident. So, um, Devlin courts that also started today. They're actually moving right along. Um, let me back up the paving project. We're thinking the end of August, we'll finish up with paving. Devlin courts, that's going to be probably a 90 day project. Um, that started today. Things are underway. I look for them to, uh, probably probably be putting asphalt out of three weeks. Bless you. Um, bless you. And then the last thing is the early grant. We applied for a grant for uh, the signal, traffic signal replacement. Um, we, we applied for two, two grants. Uh, one was for the complete replacement of the laser traffic signal, and then uh, 26 total upgrades. We have 31 traffic signals, five of them being totally replaced. Um, 
26 will get total upgrades, so meaning processors, lights, everything, the only thing we'll reuse are the poles and uh, and the actual feed wire from, from power. Everything else will be replaced. Processors, lights, uh, any kind of switching, um, and they all will have battery backup. And we also apply for, if we get it or not, would be any kind of camera systems too. Um, there's another grant coming up, I believe the end of November. We're gonna apply for uh, a few grants for the remaining signals that need replaced. So even if we get something, every year we'll apply. I would hope within five to eight years, all the signals are replaced or upgraded. And that is all I have. Thank you. Any, Any questions? questions? I did have one, and it's also finance too. So I'm in the construction industry, and as we all know, prices are going up. Correct. So we have a certain amount of capital projects that we've budgeted for. Mm -hmm. um, like, do we need to relook at those and rank them and say, well, if this bid comes in X dollars more on this one, then we have to postpone this. I, I, if, so what kind of projects? When, just take the windows and the each feature. Oh, yes. So we have a set budget if we're over, but that's just one little part of our overall capital budget. So, yes, uh, absolutely. Um, I mean, Trish and I have just talked about this. We're, we're running into a 20 to 30% increase over just what was an idea a year ago. So, uh, yeah, we're prioritizing, and if we have to, we're pushing it off. Yeah. Um, but I think we would like to see, we would like input on that since it's part oh, yeah, of a, 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 a bigger budget. Similar um, to what we did with Devlin two weeks ago, we'll do that with a couple of the other projects. Specifically, we'll talk a little bit more about grubs tonight when we do the PO for the bridge. Um, moving into next meeting, we will have the budget amendment discussion on we will propose what Jeff and I feel like is probably going to go over budget that we need to prioritize. There'll be a conversation from the stormwater meeting um, that'll probably affect that budget as well. Those items will all be brought forth as part of that budget amendment discussion. Uh, some of that was necessity because of some of the ARPA money, um, but there's also with fuel costs, there's a need to adjust the budget now versus in November. Okay, so a month from now or next week? Next meeting. Next meeting. Is everyone comfortable mm -hmm. with that? I think we can't do it piecemeal. Like, oh, this one's 25 grand over budget. Let's go for it. I think it has to be looked as all. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next up, uh, liaison reports to the Environmental Advisory Committee, Mr. Casey. The minutes are in your packet, but I'd like to call out that on July 21st, We'll have a recycling tour, and anybody on council that would like to go, please contact John Borjowski. Also, Trish, if you have any employees you feel would benefit, you want to send them, they would be welcome if you so chose. Okay. Uh, continuing on, uh, tech committee, I believe, Mr. Casey, you filled in for that last one as well, yes. correct? I have nothing to report other than puts in the packet. Any questions for Mr. Casey on either the environmental or the tech committee reports? Bearing no questions, we'll move on to the stormwater ad hoc committee. Uh, we have had no meetings uh, since the prior. Uh, there is a meeting scheduled for this Wednesday, and an agenda was sent to the meeting participants. I'll have a report in a month um, after that meeting. That would conclude the liaison reports. At this time, is there any public comment on facilities management? Anyone in the crowd? Anyone online? No. I'll yield back to the president. Thank you, Mr. Singer. Uh, we'll now do the services committee uh, reports. Ms. Clunan, would you run us through those? Thank you. Okay, we will start with the McCandless Township Sanitary Authority. Mr. Casey, do you have anything to share? The minutes are in the packet, but I'd also like to mention the fact that they did vote and they passed a resolution to allow to. Uh, Whitetail management to hunt the MTSA property. And it's right at the corner of Arcadia Drive and McKnight Road. I, I don't know how many times you've seen deer there, but I've seen deer killed there countless amounts of time. So hopefully that'll benefit some somebody driving up and down McKnight Road. And I saw in the notes that there was some discussion about some of the other facilities managed by MTSA. Are they only allowing it at the, the Arcadia facility? 
If nothing further, uh, we'll move on to the McCandless Franklin Park Ambulance Authority. Ms. Zachary. Um, the minutes are in your uh, packet. You met the new director of the Ambulance Authority in the last meeting. I, I had a question about the subscription services. It seemed like they were down in some of the communities by a lot like 25%. Uh, has there been discussion on the reason for for that or there's how not much discussion on that and they're not exactly sure why um, that that is the case. It just seemed like a big drop. Yes, it was. Yeah. I have a quick question. We had we hired a consultant to look at the operations with the turnover yes. in leadership. Is that continuing or is it on hold or No, um, it is continuing because they're on a timeline. Okay. To, so, Good. so we haven't paused that at all. So, management is changing, but the process is what's really um, kind of being looked at. Um, the different in management is make things a little more challenging for our um, consultant, but it continues. The consultant continues to meet with managers. Yeah. So, I see yeah. that all the time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. No further questions on the Ambulance Authority. Uh, we will move on to the Northland Public Library Authority. Mr. Singer. Um, I was actually not able to attend the last meeting. I believe Trish might have attended. She might be able to speak to it more, but the minutes are in your packet. But Yeah, um, and I thank you for the opportunity. I've not been to one of their meetings and uh, I appreciated that. And um, I think the minutes are from May here, not the June. Okay. So, um, I wasn't able to look at those in terms of being a member there, but um, there's not, there's a couple of different activities coming and I know that they are very happy with the um, participation in the summer reading programs and things like that. So they're really impacting the community. I want to share that. There's nothing further on the uh, library authority. Um, any public comments on services? in the room nothing online no okay that concludes the services committee reports uh, now the planning and zoning committee Ms. Zachary would you run us through that um, yes we can start with it we're, we're having this tonight at the supposed to our usual time or, because our days ever come this season. yeah yeah so it's a little out of order but you're not crazy it is um, so <laughs> second report. Right. Um, so the planning commission agenda this month was pretty light. Um, as far as plan reviews go, we just kind of have a simple subdivision lever plan, which is going to be on the agenda later. Um, everything is pretty much in order aside from they have a couple utility service letters to get in. Again, that's pretty common at this stage um, to have that approval contingent on getting those, and we just came on to um, reporting, you know, the reporting plan. We don't get it signed until we have confirmation from the different utility providers that yes, they're going to service the new lot. Um, so that again, you probably see in your packets, um, but it's just one lot coming off of the existing lot on Fox Road um, that the resident is subdividing. So I'm going to use that one. Um, among that, we had a couple other administrative items. Um, of course, recognizing the passing of Mr. Koskis, um, unfortunately. And uh, also, there was a discussion and eventual motion on adopting a public comment policy. It kind of had been a little informal historically. Um, so the commission decided to basically formalize the same rules that council uses for their public comment. Um, so going forward, everyone will see you know, some sort of procedural note on, on the agenda, letting everyone know that there is going to be a five minute um, time limit on public comments for that. Um, also, I'm just going to, before I hit the zoning solid modernization section, mention, of course, you know, this wasn't part of the planning commission meeting, but we did have our new code enforcement officer join us um, as part of our department last month. And that's been really exciting. He's been doing a wonderful job. So um, hopeful that we're going to continue to get things done and bring you the information um, as we discussed previously in the meeting. Uh, so, lastly, on the zoning and solid modernization side, uh, because we were pretty close to you know my last report, I don't have anything really major um, to provide. Just a couple different things going on uh, with you know taking the data that we heard at the uh, open house event, everything that was also on the back of the canvas, um, activity online. I think we had about I want to say 160, 170 pins in all 
that's probably included in my June report. Um, but yeah, so the consultants are finalizing reviewing all that data. Um, they just got me a post this morning that I haven't had a chance to take a look at yet, but we're going to be adding some of the you know, wrap up information to the McCandless and new pages and new blog posts. So within the next couple of days, you'll probably see something else going up there. Um, just did want to note that for the online map activity, we were only going to run it through the end of May, but because we added that, you know, unit down prior um, and that hit mailboxes, I think I want to say maybe the second, first, second week of June, we ended up extending that activity through the whole entire month of June as well. So in total, that was online for about two and a half months. Um, yeah, other than that, we put a couple photos, just a couple little roundup materials from the open house. You can watch the, almost the entire um, live presentation that the consultants gave um, because John Jarski was available to live stream it to our Facebook. So there's a link to replay that. You can see the slides. Um, you know, if you missed it, don't worry. You can still send us an email or anything. And you can see everything online. Um, and the very last item is uh, as you know, we talked about, I think it was in May, we did that whole communication report for power pulling and all the different stakeholders and things like that. Um, so at that time, the consultant did offer to do a small group uh, discussion with the planning commission for sort of what we heard from that event, you know, what direction we're going next is we're really starting to put kind of paper um, for the new code in the map. Uh, and so there were three members that expressed interest in, in doing that. Um, and so hopefully sometime this month or maybe early next month, we're, we're gonna schedule that with the consultants and those members. So, if you have any questions, have me answer. Just a comment. I want to appreciate very much um, the increase in communications with both planning commission and council. Uh, the communications and the paperwork you're providing us is wonderful. It's what we've asked for. I very much appreciate your efforts for that. Thank you Thanks. very much. Oh, yeah. And you'll see uh, task force minutes because yeah. after that request previously, um, the consultants did go ahead and prepare that for the meeting. It was so, wonderful. Thank you very yeah. much for that. You won't see that again until August. Understandable. So, yeah. Thank you. In the Michael Brown uh, report that was part of this said that there was uh, low involvement from the residents in the comprehensive plan. Do we know how many people were involved in the um, comprehensive plan compared to how many the involvement that we've had so far in this plan? This is this is a really deep filing cabinet in the back of my brain that I've got to because I was not here. This is just from reading stuff that was in the box. <laughs> you know? I want to say that maybe we had somewhere around 300 surveys when they were mailed out to everybody, but I'd, I'd have to double check. It's been a long time since I looked. For the comprehensive um, plan? Yes, for the comprehensive plan. I do not have numbers for attendance of events or anything like that. I believe that comment in the minutes was generated from a comment that someone made at that meeting because the consultants would not have you know, attendance or participation data to review to make that assertion on their own. So um, I can certainly, you know, go back and pull some of those numbers, but I want to say it was about 300 people for the survey, maybe 250, somewhere around there. If it was a lot higher, then that's actually a pretty good number, at least for the survey that people responded to. Um, that, um, the implications of that, I would like the consultant to reconsider because we've had public events, we had surveys, and we also had public events. So it'd be- Right, yeah, again, that's, I think that was just a yeah. comment that a member of the group made. It, 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 they, they would not make that assertion on their own. They don't have that data. I'd like to consider that for it. It was kind of bad, I think, on the town that um, there was low involvement in the conference plan because it wasn't. So if we amended that to say, Feedback at the meeting was that, you know, or do you want it removed or well, how could we satisfy? It's an opinion. I don't think it's there's a place in that. I was there anyone in that meeting that was part of the comprehensive plan? Besides, well, besides, I mean that's kind of hard me. for me to say, to be honest. I also was not here. So okay. um, I would just appreciate it. It just made it look like looks bad for the town. These are not posted you know, on the website or anything, but we can still go back and you know, request them out to the document. Well, maybe just so the consultant is aware of that. Sure, yeah, you can pass that along. And it's represented by someone who wasn't part of that process. Sure. How many people have involved, I wanted to get to how many people have been involved this time. I was hoping it was more. Okay, so. Better. We have, what I was actually going for. I see, okay. Well, I mean, I. 
again, not being here, you know, I don't know what the turnout was of the events, but honestly, the public engagement process that we're following is pretty similar in terms of the volume of events. And I mean, we didn't have a canvas in the platform, but still, there were some online things we did as well. Um, I want to say mm, about 60 people probably turned out to the open house event, which they consider to be a very good turnout. Um, and again, we've had somewhere a little under, I, I want to say 1500 um, views, you know, interactions basically with the Canvas Listen Me page, um, as well as probably close to, to 200 people or at least 200 you know, events where people have engaged with the different activities we've had for so far. I have a question. As you know, only town residents are allowed to come up and address council. Mm -hmm. How do you qualify the people dropping pins that they are town residents? So um, this is, I know this is a question that's come up you know, throughout the process. And um, I mean, we we have sort of some a couple different things to weigh in that, you know, some have expressed that they really want things to be totally anonymous so people feel comfortable you know, just sharing whatever their feelings are. Um, we do have the option in the McCann Listen Me platform to block participation to register users only. Um, when we were crafting that whole sign up process you know, back in I think it was 2020, um, you know, there was a discussion at the time of how much personal information can we request without you know, making people feel like this is sort of just a data grab or we're just trying to figure out who you are, you know, um, because people do send in anonymous comments and, and complaints and things like that in other venues. Um, so the way that, that we came up with was asking people for their zip code when they register, um, because, you know, that's that's a pretty good guess. At least it even helps us sort of pay like what area of town you might live in, because, you know, as sort of our community identity drives that was something I was talking about in the comp plan, you know, there may be more of neighborhood identities or things like that that grow out. So that was something that we really tried to capture um, when we initially designed the sign up now. Since our, our initial activities, those were all user locked, um, partially to sort of drive signups so that we could get people who were interested, you know, on the mailing list and things like that. But also because I think there was a desire to sort of suss out whether people were residents. Um, what we were hearing between, you know, this point, and when we implemented the platform was that we wanted it to be more, more open, we were concerned that we were making it too hard to sign up. Um, you know, I it's something that's been an ongoing discussion, certainly at this meeting. It's so really, in other words, you can't do. I mean, we can't. I, I don't think it would be realistic to 100% be so sure. We don't know whether it's somebody in Washington, D.C. trying to control what we're doing with our lives here in the campus or or somebody that's local. Um, I would say that that's not the character of the comments that we have seen. Um, there hasn't really been anything that was so out of left field that it seems like somebody who has no familiarity with the town at all. There are certainly differing opinions that are expressed on the platform, um, but no, it at this point, and I, I think it would be difficult to verify that someone was a resident, even if we did ask for more personal information, so you could pick an address. But you if know. you could limit it to one five two three seven. 15090 and whatever zip codes we have, that would be beneficial because it would be a fair look at this all done. Yeah, so we, we would have to we would have to lock the future activities to registered users only. Um, again, there's no sort of ID verification on the other side of that. So you know somebody could just it's choose something you need to do. But well well, Jack, I do like, I like the word you used, character of the comment. Right. So like you, uh, any reasonable person could read something that mm -hmm. is maybe they don't know about our community or about it, it, it had an agenda behind it. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I think there is an agenda driven group out there that are dropping pins. We can have a discussion about that afterwards if you prefer, but yeah. I have a concern. Bottom line when it comes to this project or anything else that you know we make a policy decision from these engagement activities that we use you know at the end of the day council votes and at the end of the day the consultants have to stand by their work and public engagement you know public feedback is very important to sort of take the temperature of the people that are really but interested in this project public but it's feedback. but it's not the only driving force and so if there's something that appears to not fit the character of somebody who's familiar with the area who lives here 
or it's just not a good recommendation from a policy or a planning standpoint. That doesn't mean that just because somebody said it online that it's going to end up being that. Um, so I, I, that's something that I try to keep in mind as we've gotten feedback. Um, but you know, again, we're always, always open to your thoughts and concerns from you all. We've talked about that. It was super hard to control for. And when we did our uh, comprehensive plan before, we had, we documented those by IP address. And somebody who's smart figured out how to change their IP address and how they found this out. Some secret computer guy, smart guy, figured this out, the girl, that they found out that one person had voted, because you, you know, it would be one vote, but one person had voted 27 times. And the way they figured it out is they did exactly the same time every night, had exactly the same hours. So 100% control is not even, yeah. I don't even know how you would. And I can say we're definitely not seeing that because yeah. there was one resident that got locked out of her account that she'd signed up for, you know, an, another activity before. And um, it's it's very aggressive about like, you have to put an email address in and you cannot use that email address for two different names, even if you're not a registered user. Because I tried to go in and drop a pit for her. Of course, I have a registered account because I admin the platform. And so it wouldn't even let me do it as a guest, you know, because it could identify me. So um, at the very least, you know, you do, you can make up a fake name, but you have to put a name in and it does associate itself with some sort of identifying information that it's very unlikely unless somebody's creating a bunch of fake emails just to do that, that we can even have something like that happen. It doesn't guarantee you're a resident, but it does at least do some quality control on the end of it. There are no further questions and that would be the These on reports of planning commission RG, I think is some of everything that we'll talk about the new plan. Uh, the, the minutes were not yet available for this meeting. They will be available in the next week or so. Um, so if there's questions, um, happy to answer them or we can look forward to the, that those minutes coming. But there will be a zoning hearing board meeting this month. Oh, and I forgot to say, as of now, there will not be a That's correct. We didn't receive any submissions. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll move to old business. Uh, so our, our community knows we want to give everybody an update on our town manager search. Uh, Dr. Rafa leads that, but since she's out, I will, uh, I will give everybody an update. We received a good number of, of uh, applications. Uh, our HR and our uh, our committee vetted them. Uh, we had an initial round of interviews. Uh, those were uh, then whittled down to a second round of interviews. Uh, and there were two candidates uh, this evening that council met with. Uh, we are hoping to make a final selection uh, in the next week. Uh, and if we can come to an agreement with the potential new town manager, we would vote on it uh, at our next meeting in, in two weeks. So does anybody from council want to add anything that I might've missed? Nope. Okay. Very good. We'll move on to new business. Uh, the first is for a pedestrian bridge. Um, is it on budget or you get, can you give us the brief rundown? So this is part of the Grubbs Road sidewalk connection project. Um, this project was divided into two phases. The first phase, the public works team put in um, a number of sidewalk feet out in front of town hall um, between public works and um, and out front here, the final driveway. The second part of this grant, that second phase is to, which in which we're paying for with the grant is to pay for the pedestrian bridge. Um, tonight's item is the purchase order for the physical bridge. Um, it covers the um, bridge and the delivery. The gateway is also asking for a go ahead to proceed with the bid. The bid will include um, the contractor placing the bridge. Um, Jeff can give you the 
terminology probably better than I can. Um, but then whatever is remaining will also go towards the remaining sidewalk to Ingemar. Um, Gateway is recommending that we do some all ads for some of that. Um, we want to make sure we get an ADA compliant, et cetera, to be in compliant with the grant. So um, they have some alternatives for us and they could potentially put that out next month. Did I miss anything? Okay. So is this worded correctly? Because I heard things about, oh, but then you will use part of it for a this is Bid. no this 67,000 no. is just the purchase order it exceeds my purchase authority as the interim town manager of $40,000 so it had to come to council in order yeah. for the purchase order to be approved okay so we're only we're only approving the purchase order to purchase that correct, correct. we have not put the bid out for the contractor for installation the bid um, the PO is of course like anything else right now taking a while to come in so they are projecting that the Bridge, if we put the purchase order in this week, would be available in November of 22. Okay. This is roughly what we had budgeted? Yes. Okay. okay. Very good. Uh, does anybody have any more questions? So this means that all the DEP stuff we're done with. They finally got the permit for the for the pedestrian crossing, and so that that's why we're moving forward with the bid. Okay. Or, I'm that, sorry, with the PO. Because that was the holdup for so yes, long was to get that. Yes. Um, I'd also like to super double dog thank contact because we launched into this price last year. What? Well, no, they made this price for us last year, and then we couldn't get this done because DEP, COVID, whatever, whatever, and we didn't move forward, couldn't move forward, prices are going up, 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 and so we asked them to lock in this price, mm -hmm. and they locked in this price for us. So they could have easily, we could have easily been paying a lot more for this. So a special thanks for them because they did not have to do that, and they did that for us. Okay, what you want to yes, this this piece they have locked in. It's the additional construction that we are, like everything else, concerned potentially will come in over budget, but we are prepared for that. Okay. Any other questions before we ponder a motion? Okay. Would anybody like to make a motion? I would. Ms. Zachary. Uh, motion to approve the purchase order of 480 quote Q. UO477071 W1X77 and the amount of $67,000 for the Grove Road sidewalk, pedestrian bridge, with contact engineer to solutions. A second. Second. Ms. Clooney. Any discussion before we vote? Okay. Everyone in favor of the purchase order motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Okay, I think we have someone here from Waste Management. Yes, uh, William Thornton is here. Uh, we received a request from Waste Management to suspend the uh, 6 a.m. start uh, in days that exceeded 87 degrees, that were projected to exceed 87 degrees Fahrenheit. He's here for questions. Come up, William, if I don't know if anybody has any questions. Thank you for coming. Yes, sir. I know you start today very early. Okay. <laughs> Does anybody from council have any questions of William about this? I'm sure you do this in other communities. Um, on average, how many days a summer does this constitute? Justin, so I think the uh, request was put in about mid June. Mm -hmm. If you guys, since that time, we actually have not enacted it in any other communities that we service as of as of yet. Um, as we get into August, we do usually see some temperatures get into the high 80s and the 90s. Mm -hmm. um, we picked 87 degrees because the heat index or the feels like uh, at that temperature, you're, you're into the mid 90s. Plus, it's a little bit of a labor intensive job. Um, the guys are out there for 10 to 12 hours a day. Uh, we've already experienced three heat, heat illness, heat related illnesses. I'm not specifically here McCandless, but out of, out of my operation out of that so the guy the guys um, are very cognizant uh, of the time restrictions and they do play uh, fair with that but they did ask uh, it was put out in front of my workforce they did ask that we approach communities and make the simple request one hour is a big deal of that so that's my big signal. 
<clears throat> how much pickup is manual and how much is by the truck where they I don't want to oversimplify it, hit the button and it here in McCain specifically? Yeah. You are all technically in automation of some sort. So your operators are all inside the cab. They are. Usually with the doors open, yeah, uh, and still retrieving anything that's left on the side. Okay, so they get okay, they get out into the weather. In the excess. If, if, if there is an excess. I see if there's an excess. So this can't be something new, right? I mean, it's been, this is something, temperatures are over 87 degrees. Uh, why wasn't this negotiated in the contract? I can't speak to why it was not negotiated within the, the contract of fuel or any previous. Uh, I've recently taken over this site. Um, I came from a, a hauling operation in West Virginia where this is common practice. Uh, so in, in preparation of this summer, uh, I did ask the question of the management team, what, what's, as far as summer goes, what protocols do we have? And they said, uh, we got into kind of the contractual agreements previously. I uh, was aware that there is a contractual start time uh, within the contract, and that's why I'm, again, in front of you this morning, not just enacting it uh, on our own. Had a lot of trouble um, before this we broke our noise ordinance routinely and being trashed in the middle of the night enough of the citizens complained about that but that finally stopped thank goodness but i video of it myself two o'clock in the morning into the trash not on cold days we're having a lot of problems now with our trash getting picked up i'm getting bombarded with complaints about what's <coughs> my trash is getting picked my own trash is not getting picked up my neighbor's trash is not getting picked up one day later two days later not at all it feels like something else is going on in regards to to yeah so it's not directly related to the heat uh you brought up a couple issues uh the first one we'll address which is the noise ordinance in previous I am aware of two noise ordinance complaints that, that we received uh, in my short tenure with them so far. Um, the, the violations were issued and we did pay them. And we also spoke with and dealt with our, our employee internally regarding those violations. Uh, in, in regards to recent uh, attrition of employees, we have lost a few employees. Uh, the last couple of years, I think, have been uh, very difficult. On the, on the utility companies, on public works, and first responders who, who never really had the opportunity to take a break when COVID came out. And, you know, they they were on the street from day one till today. So there, there's a lot of stress that's involved in that. We've dealt with attrition through that. We've dealt through, I, I, I don't think anyone here is, uh, line to what's been called the great recession or the great resignation uh, that's going on currently. Uh, CDL truck driving is not uh, an industry right now that is well staffed, not just with waste management, but all around. Uh, we, we've added incentives and review pays and, and everything else. And, and, and in the short, McCandless has had service issues. There's, there's no doubt about it. Joanne's been very open with communicating those, and we res respond appropriately. Here for McCain specifically, your manager's been on the road himself, trying to ensure that service. Um, when we do see service issues are apparent, we always focus in on the trash because that's the biggest nuisance. Um, the majority of what I know of, as I sit in front of you this morning or this evening is it's yard waste. We, we do suffer on the yard waste service uh, where it's constantly delayed. And I think we had some that were delayed this afternoon. Uh, and that's where the driver will report to first thing tomorrow. I, uh, I cannot, safety comes first at the end of the day. If I lose an employee, I'm not gonna throw keys and, and a 73,000 pound vehicle at somebody I don't know. It's a, it's a seven week course. Um, and some people don't even make it out of that. So are your trucks air conditioned? They, they do have air, air conditioned equipment. Yes, ma'am. 
I mean, mechanical issues do happen with them. Uh, it, and no different than my industry, the parts industry are suffering as well. So trucks are air conditioned. Yes, ma'am. They don't heat out unless there's an additional thing put in. So it's 100% automated. Yes, ma'am. This is just a simple request, ma'am. Ms. Zachary, any more questions? No. It doesn't seem fair for the citizens to have to, you know, have a violation of the noise ordinance and they're peace and quiet when it's hard to see a problem. See this problem. We have other problems. Seeing this problem. Anybody else on council? Have How do you determine whether it's going to be 87? You watch Channel 4 News, National, you know. So, in working with municipalities, we've, a, we've allowed them. To, to define or determine that. Uh, some have used weather.gov uh, because it, it, you know, it is a government website. Uh, they've asked for 24 to 48 hours notice. So we are going on forecasting that could not ultimately be 87 or above, uh, but it does give the opportunity to the municipality or to the borough to communicate it out to the residents uh, through social media or whatever communications they have with them. What are the hours of your employees today? My start times of, of, of my employees range from between 3.30 to 5 a.m. Uh, an employee will work 10 to 12 hours a day. They work 55 to, to 58 hours a week. Thank you. Any other questions? I just had a couple. Oh, so we have a 6 a.m. start time now is the, is the earliest you can start mm -hmm. i honestly should have yes yeah. even think it was a 7 a.m uh, seven but uh if it's i could have confused it with another municipality if it if the noise ordinance is six anyway no. i they started i thought it was six a.m so i thought it was yeah. seven but six on certain streets it was an argument yeah, yeah. Correct. Six six on the main. so it says we're discussing the, the established contract time to suspend it so that then you would start a half hour early or two hours early or four hours early or again we've asked the municipalities we're, we're not looking for anything more than an hour yeah um and we i haven't had municipalities say no yet we're looking for some consistency in their in their lives as well uh so that we can like communicate early to them again with the 24 to 48 hours notice we're also giving that to the employees uh there are dot regulations of course we have to abide by make sure they're off the previous day so we can start early so to speak so you're looking to just we, be an hour early or because i'm not looking to go any more than an hour okay so one at an hour early. yes sir okay. i would say with the caveat of not the, of the six o'clock not moving if that if it's you know no earlier no earlier than six on any road I was going to say it's already a problem because I know before we yeah. negotiated this, Kim and I both said I've had residents complain. Oh, yeah. Six is yes. too early. We have people who I have, I have one, he's an electrician for hospitals. He has to work till one, two in the morning, he comes home, he has to go to sleep. He works different hours than us. And when you hear that and the can dropping, it wakes them up. I, I This bothers me because I know I had residents complaining. And I just, it, it bothers me that it's before seven o'clock. So that's just my opinion. And that, I mean, I just do want to clarify, you're meeting all of your protocols of work conditions in-house and all those, even on a, above 80, 70 degree days, you're providing your employees with everything requirement to OSHA, ANSI standards and everything else. My correct? employees can't leave a lot without uh, the cooler attached to the truck. It's it's fully stocked. Yeah. Okay. Water, Gatorade, ice, it's all paid for by the company. Thank you, sir. All right. Any other questions? So it's just hard for me to understand the value proposition because regardless of whether you start at six or seven or five, you're still going to be working through the hottest part of the day. Mm -hmm. And then the temperature is going to be coming down. So I don't, if, if they were out of the vehicle the whole time, it would make a lot of sense, but I'm just, I understand. I'm not really getting it. I understand. So this is not. This is a head. This is a head shake. A yay and a. It's not a formal. It's not a vote. It's just a policy matter. It's just a. 
Well, I just think to so. just change a contract, we would have to do something formal. Yes, so yeah. this was advertised as a discussion to get information from waste management, and you can take it into consideration further if you would like. You could, but it, it does not need to be a vote. This was not a voting matter um, at this point. If you would like to eventually, if you would like to change the contract, that would need to be. We would vote in two weeks. Yes. Okay, so, so basically we, we're just talking about, do we, we are, are we entertaining? Would we entertain it or not? Okay. Is that is that sort of what what? And then what the, we, we will take further look at if you yeah. do want to make any sort of changes, we'll take further look at the solicitor's office of the contract and review yeah. and, and come up with some okay. proposed changes. All right. So would we entertain it? I guess we'll go down. Would you entertain it? Yeah. No. Mr. Casey. Yeah. I don't think so. Interesting. I, I work in the construction industry. I mean it, it it happens where you start earlier and later during hot days. Um, but you know Air conditioned trucks meeting all the standards, providing cores, hats off to you. Um, I think we're within our means of safety in, in concern, so I, I would be a no. Okay. I'm a no. I'm a no as well. And, it's, and also because of when we were discussing the contract before, um, it, it was not a unanimous decision to take it to six. And some of us, uh, I voted for the six, and I'm not willing to go earlier than that. Yeah, and I'm not in favor of it moving forward uh, either. So we appreciate you. I appreciate you take, taking your time out. I know you start like four in the morning. Okay. So <laughs> and I want to tell you, drag you service out. my residence has been exemplary for years. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, boy. All right. Thank you. Have a good evening. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Next up, uh, the Weaver plan is this. The RJ would Yes, this is, this is a simple subdivision. Um, Anyone like to entertain a motion? Motion to approve the Weaver Plan subdivision application located at 9610 Fox Road, Lot, Lot. Second. Second. Uh, any comments or discussion before we vote? Okay. Everyone in favor of the Weaver plan motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. And then letter D, that's just the release of a, a bond given the Yes. Um, so I would like to speak to this. I'd actually um, like to make a motion to table this. Um, I had spoken with our town engineer about some of the items in um, the stormwater management aspect of this, um, and he agrees that um, some additional time would be necessary. So I would like to make a motion to table um, the release of the performance bond. And Anna, what is that? Is there a need to second and a vote, or is that just enough of the motion? To table it until next meeting. Um, I I would do, go for a second and then a vote to table. I'll okay. second it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Second by Ms. Swagger. Okay. So then we'll take a vote. I guess we'll have any comments. Is there any comments on on it before we even discuss anything? I don't see any. Okay. So we're voting on to <clears throat> table uh, the performance bond at the Barrel Hunter parking lot uh, until next meeting. Pending. Additional information. Pending mm -hmm. information. Correct. What she said. So, <laughs> everyone in favor of tabling signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Parking okay. signage, Rolls House Road. Who's going to ask Jeff to come up? <clears throat> How this all came about was uh, we were getting traffic signal complaints. Yes, do you have your packets in front of you? Um, we got a, I think it's illustration of two. Actually, illustration four. In 2009, people up there, you see the, the cars parked alongside the, the church 
Um, apparently, at one time, they used that for funeral services. Um, years following that, we, we during our paving program, we repaved it and we never lined off the road at all. So, over time, um, if you go to illustration three, folks start parking on the other side, which actually forced the traffic over to the church side. Normally, this would not be a problem. However, the loop uh, for the traffic signal, which if you look on drawing two or page or illustration two, you can see where the loop is. Um, so what I would like to do uh, to actually, because this is a, it's a pretty serious safety issue, um, on the right side of the road, install no parking signs. That will allow us to go on the other side of the road from the church side, put a white line down there, put a double yellow, just, I think it's two <laughs> feet. So that's you. Every time I come up here, you snake. <laughs> um, yellow line in the center, um, keep traffic. I'm surprised nobody has gotten hit yet on the right side of this, parking on the right side of this road. But um, if we do that, Traffic signal will work correctly. Um, and for those of you that don't know what a loop is, a loop's a buried wire underground. It's just basically a magnetic field. When a vehicle pulls into that, it breaks the field, it actually raises the impedance, causing uh, to trigger the light that somebody's waiting at the light. If you're not inside that loop, even if you're halfway into it, it won't, it won't trigger the light. So. The other issue, when people are coming off 19, making a right onto this road, some people travel fast coming onto this road and there's vehicles parked there. Somebody's, it's just a matter of time. So I can speak to this. This is my ward. I've received a number of complaints. Um, residents can't get the light to work. Residents can't pull in because cars are the wrong way. And I thought it was a simple repainting thing, but Jeff told me it's not that simple. Yet. So that's why I came here today. So. I mean, uh, I don't, again, I don't know how this got repaved and nobody remarked. There were no road markings back on the road. So. And there was, I, on my way here, I passed there three cars yeah. in the stretch yes. today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we need a formal motion to approve this or is this a straw pool? So under the Pennsylvania Vehicle Code, the addition of traffic control signal does need to be done by ordinance. Okay. Um, and that is true to your charter as well. So you can make a motion to have the solicitor's office draft a motion for your next meeting or draft an ordinance for your next meeting. Maybe I'm hearing things wrong. I thought it was taking it back to what it was previously. Is, so there, is it in the books currently at they, that location? They have to have the no parking signs. No, yeah, there, there so, were no parking signs. But the way it was set up before when it was lined originally, mm -hmm. you wouldn't dream of parking it, you basically you'd be parking in a way, mm -hmm. but since there were no markings, everything kind of shifted over this way, and people okay. now park on this side. No, it's the red light. Mm -hmm. Perryman comes up. Yeah, it's, it's right across from mm -hmm. It's not yeah. a new signal. That it's no, it's an it, existing signal. But existing signal. If we are adding stop signs, I don't know if that's included in the. It traffic. is included okay. if you're adding any sort of signage or a light. Um, we're adding no parking. You are signs. adding it. Via ordinance. Okay. And no parking sign falls under that? No parking sign would be done by ordinance as well. Okay. Yes. Yes. It does need to be laid out. And everything parking under is also under the motor vehicle. I'm surprised to hear how easy parking versus how driving. Is. Okay. I will <laughs> confirm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah. <laughs> so um, I'll make a motion to have our town solicitor. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I'll make a motion to have our town solicitor look into preparing an ordinance for the Rolls House Road traffic amendments. I'll second. Second. Okay. We will prepare that for review. Awesome. Maybe reaching out. And, it's gonna be so yeah, oh, sorry. That would be helpful. <laughs> Um, yeah, if there's any questions. Do we have to do the vote where you had something to the agenda? Because it was a non voting requirement? No, it's, it's sufficiently on um, on your agenda to have the, I believe, the no parking signature. Um, if you would like to vote to add 
adding it to the agenda. That is probably the most safest way. I would way like to do, do that first. <laughs> Please, so that would be a, a motion to add the motion to add a agenda item uh, requesting a motion for the town's attorney to review the town charter and ordinances and to draft a proposed ordinance amending the parking sign. So moved. So. <laughs> yeah. so thank you. I appreciate it. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Okay. I guess and now you can. The discussion I have is we just said to the, the town attorney mm -hmm. is going to review. Is there any engineering that needs to be done? I mean, Jeff knows what he's doing, but is there any? Is a traffic engineer need to look at it to say there's there's this and that? It should not be required. We, we can utilize it. those drawings even as an exhibit for review, and and that should be sufficient. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Farr, basically we're returning it to what it was. However, I don't dare put any kind of markings back on the street if people don't know you can't park over there. That's really all we're trying to do. Okay. So the motion we have that we're going to vote on is to have the town attorney draft it. Uh, so, okay. Hold on. Am I, am I wrong? We have to have the first motion to get it on the agenda, which is what yes. we just first got, and second. Not on the agenda, and now we're having the second vote. Okay. <laughs> For me to do it. We're voting on adding it to the agenda now. Yes. You have voted to add it on the agenda. No, no we, we have not. to we do that. Not. We took first and seconds. Yeah. I just and want to make sure it's correct. Vote. Yeah. Okay. So we are voting on to add it to the agenda. Yes, yes. Everyone in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Public Can comment on the new agenda item. Do we have to wishes. advertise in the paper? She's going to we, talk. Uh, we will prepare. Um, in all likelihood, it will be needed to be advertised before enactment, but it can be prepared for your review um, quickly so that you can. Does it detect. require two? I am going to look into that now. I'm not familiar with exactly which um, class of ordinance is required, but I will review quickly so that we can take any steps necessary. Thank you. Okay, so we've added it to the agenda, so we're going to ask for public comment now. Yes. Okay, is there any public comment on what we just recently added to the agenda? I see none in person, and I imagine there's none online. I'm confused about what we're voting on. It's not formally written on our right. agenda as a voting item. Yeah. The only thing we're at doing is asking her to write it up. We, don't have to vote on that. we have to vote on that because we have to. She has to go to a zoning. Us. It's going to go to a, a public uh, Just ordinance. To ask her to put an ordinance together. We haven't done that before. Simply because it's it's being asked at at a public meeting and it was not included on the agenda. You are mm -hmm. taking action or furthering a request for action on this item. I would say that 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 does qualify for uh, needing to be added under the new Sunshine Act regulations. If, if it was something that was already discussed previously and, and established, that's one thing, but because it is a new new item on which you are moving forward under a cautious reading of the new such item requirements. Okay. So we added it to the agenda. Okay. So we added the agenda. Now we've asked for public comment and we've received none. So now we're going to go to a motion to have the town attorney. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. Review and prepare an ordinance as required under the charter and the Pennsylvania Motor Vehicle Code uh, to establish no parking signs and reestablish the um, traffic control device that was at the location. So moved. Okay. Second. <laughs> Second. Okay. Everyone in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> okay. We thoroughly confused everybody. Yes. <laughs> so. All right. Okay, last but not least, the uh, general public comments. Is there anybody here tonight that would like to make them? Please come up to the, to the mic and take your name and address and clear your chat. All right, yes, my name is uh, James Winsheimer. I live at 120 Ridge Avenue uh, in Ingemar. I spoke at the May meeting towards the end of May and the uh, other meeting last I got back from vacation on the issue of the noise ordinance for off-road and trail bike uh, riding in the township. I did notice during the waste management that a couple of the council people addressed, it's a little different, but uh, the noise issue. Well, I'm dealing with that now in my backyard. I had Officer Ray, uh, 
uh, I know him from North Allegheny. He's the resource officer. He was there tonight, so I, I had to leave. I don't know what was resolved, but the bike has been going on for two nights in a row. Um, I'm sitting in my backyard, my wife and I, we can't have quiet conversation. The exhaust fumes are bad. I, I did present to you, Council, uh, in the May meeting, a, a copy, which is really a great uh, ordinance over in Hampton Township to have our council look at. I don't know if you guys tabled it, discussed it. I'm asking that something be done because this is starting, uh, we, we talk about civility and respect. Well, I'm not getting any respect from my neighbor. It's a teenage son. Um, I'm fighting City Hall. The guy has, I don't want, I'm not making this an issue of rich poor, but a lot of money. I can't fight it otherwise, but it's the point I'm dealing with this. The exhaust fumes, if I would have my windows open, they're coming into my house, okay? Or if I'm sitting in my backyard, the noise, I, you don't like noise. How would you, each view, you would not like to be sitting in your home or your yard. You know what a dirt bike sounds like when it's rubbing up and there's two? I'm dealing with this. And I'm the only guy I know complaining, okay, uh, because it affects the way the old house is on, on my street. It's affecting me, and it's affecting my health. It's affecting my blood pressure. My wife and I, it, it, it's just more. So I'm just kindly, respectfully asking that this, I, I've talked to Mike about this. I'm sure you still have the copy of Hamptons. Mm -hmm. It's well-worded. It, it, it's uh, our, Ours even says, here's our, ours about or unusual or unnecessary noise. I want to know what's necessary uh, about a trail bike being 30, 40 feet from somebody's back door racing in the woods, okay? On July 2nd, I called the police uh, uh, that day too. That was a couple weeks ago. It started at 12.30 that day. It went on to about quarter to eight, off and on all day. Now, it's not grass cutting. It's not a leaf blower. It's not a, a chainsaw, which, you know, you have to do things around your house. This is unnecessary. I mean, and it's right behind in a residential neighborhood. McCandless does not, I don't know, I, I've been in touch with the uh, code enforcement. Uh, I don't know, we got a new person now, but that person, uh, nothing was done. I've been in touch with police. There's never been any citations, nothing was done. So I, I don't know what other recourse other than to table the strongly worded one that Hampton has about in, disrupting a, uh, the repose of a, a, a citizen or uh, the, the tranquility of their home, health reasons, whatever, uh, that you would look at the Hamptons uh, uh, ordinance and, and word ours much more stronger. But it does say in ours about which emit unusual or unnecessary noise so as to cause discomfort and inconvenience. Well, I'm the guy and my wife, we're having the discomfort and the inconvenience and nothing's being done about it to nearby residents of the town and or visitors to the town. So I'm just asking kindly and respectfully, and I did hear you, like I said, with the waste management, even though it's early in the morning. I get up early too, I work for North Allegheny Transportation. I'm up at three o'clock during the school year. I'm up at four now during the summer, but last night it started, I think after eight o'clock, 8.30, and they had a light on in the woods back there. And I was going to bed, I could hear it through my window, even though we have the air conditioner on. Okay, I can hear it in my window. Couldn't sit out though, because sometimes the breeze is coming just right from Belcrest Road up that way. The fumes come over. When I was sick with COVID last year in the fall, I had my windows open, the bikes were worn, I couldn't even rest. And I, I did I saved the text. I texted my neighbor, hey, the fumes are coming around in my house, but nothing's been done. So I'm just kindly asking if you could please table that, look at it. I, I'd like to know something's being done here. And I I don't know what other recourse to take here. So I'm going to keep coming to council, but something needs to be done. And like I said, I heard about the waste man, the noise. Nobody wants to hear stuff, especially unnecessary or, or, or being treated really. And, and this isn't right. So I'm kindly asking if you would uh, do something. Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciate your time. Well, well respect. Yeah, hopefully. Anyone else? Okay. Well, I Barbara Richards, 305 Manor Court, and um, I am here to speak on behalf of myself, a resident of the Canvas, and also for the Coalition for Safe Community Spaces. You must all know us. We're the group of faith-based organizations, community groups, and fed up individuals. We also have allies in gun violence prevention all over Pittsburgh. We are shocked by the lack of attention this body continues to show regarding AR-15, weapons of war, beginner classes, which Midwest Shooting Center is scheduling at 900 Providence Boulevard in the neighborhood shopping center of McCallus Crossing. 
Since February of 2016, this council and town administration has missed three opportunities to keep a public gun range out of this location. I know that many of you uh, were not here during all that has transpired, but you're, you're here now and it's still going on. Um, we are the town of McCandless. You work for us. We have a right to public safety and you have the obligation to provide public safety. We are tired of this town running scared from developers and hiding behind any language or 1960s codes that you can find to defend your mistakes. The mistakes and mistakes they are. As some of you here and some formally elected and employed by the panelists have admitted. The coalition received a statement from the town that again tried to absolve and wash your hands of your responsibility to public safety by saying that you had no legal authority to prohibit Midwest from using AR-15s for recreational training purposes. Sorry, but an AR-15 is not a recreational firearm. It is a weapon of war, a killing machine, a weapon that blows children's heads off with one shot. Recreational or sporting firearms are coin terms, not legal terms. And just saying so doesn't make it so. Midwest has now scheduled another AR-15 class, which I seriously doubt many McCandless residents are signing up for, um, uh, for Sunday, July 24th at 10 a.m. Sunday at 10 a.m where the Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Church is holding services. Their entrances are directly across from each other. This is outrageous. And this town continues to defend the menace that Midwest Shooting Center has now become. How about your moral and ethical responsibility to the citizens who elected you and pay administrative salaries? Surely you can find something in your broad legal tool bag to help us Existing codes have always been vague enough for developers to get what they want. Can't you use those to defend the safety of your citizens? Can't you, at the very least, remind adventure development of its responsibility as a business partner in the canvas? As we told adventure, this is not going away as long as the Midwest Shooting Center continues its menacing behavior and puts our community at great risk. The canvas is not immune, immune to serious gun violence and mass shootings. I ask you to wake up. Thank you. Thank you for your call. Is there anyone else? Good evening. I'm Sister Mary Troutman. I'm a sister of Divine Providence, 9000 Babcock Boulevard. And I too would like to address the matter of AR-15 training. But first, let's just review the mission statement of the town of McCandless as on the website. The town of McCandless yeah. governs based upon solid core values of integrity, straightforwardness, pragmatism, and an attitude of public service and selflessness. We offer programs of service that emanate from these principles delivered in optimal fashion. I also like to quote Cardinal Blaise Supich, who is the Archbishop of Chicago, of which Highland Park is a suburb. After the massacre there, he said, the right to bear arms does not eclipse the right to life or the right of all Americans to go about their lives free of the fear that they might be shredded by bullets at any moment. Gun violence is a life issue. Today, many people profess to be pro-life, but in a shopping center, site of movie theaters, restaurants, a church, and a, with an elementary school right across the street, Providence Heights Alpha School, pre-K through eight. You have built a shopping center, a shooting center 
though you called it a recreation facility or an office building, concealing from the citizens the intended function. How does that comport with integrity, straightforwardness, pragmatism, and an attitude of public service and selflessness? The late Greg Wachowskis, while he was a member of this council, acknowledged, quote, we did it wrong, unquote. Kim Zachary, you were present when he made that statement. Later, in an email that he sent to many people, Greg referred to the shooting center as a travesty. We should not repeat that travesty. You've caused a church to lock its doors during Sunday services in an effort to keep worshipers safe. Now that shooting center is planning on teaching patrons how to use weapons of war, AR-15s. What is the point of that? AR-15s are not designed for hunting. What's the point? And this comes after Buffalo, Uvalde, Tulsa. <clears throat> In Uvalde, children were decapitated by AR-15s. We were promised numerous times that the zoning would be changed so that never again could a shooting range be built in a populated area. And we seem to be nowhere on that. That's been years. A municipality a little north of us developed a shooting range with the collaboration of the municipal government, the architect, and the citizens. This was straightforward and not underhanded. Now, we will have carriers of AR-15s, weapons of war, walking around McCandless Crossing. Has anyone from McCandless talked to the people at Midwest and tried to get them to do the right thing? And one of their neighbors is Dix, a company that was so moved by the massacre in Parkland that they got rid of AR-15s. Seems to me that conversation with Midwest would be right in line with core values of integrity, straightforwardness, pragmatism, and an attitude of public service and selflessness. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, sister. Any other those with us tonight that need to make, want to make public comment? Seeing none, anyone online? No. Okay. Very good. So then, uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Is there an announcement of the executive? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. So, yes, uh, we are going to uh, adjourn this meeting and go into executive session now to discuss personnel matters. Is that good enough? Okay. Very good. Thank you, everybody.